Hey all here OS Reviews, in this video we are taking a retro throwback look at the Nokia Engage QD. This is one of the most interesting series of phones in history, and at the time, in the early 2000s, it was released as a combination phone-slash-portable gaming console, at the time really trying to rival the Nintendo Game Boy Advance, which was really popular. It was released in 2003, at least the original model, uh, which was also dubbed the Taco Phone by many folks, just because of Nokia's kind of strange design of putting the earpiece and the microphone on the sides, you had to hold the phone like this to your head. The QD that you're looking at here is actually the slightly upgraded model that was released in 2004, so one year later, but shares the same hardware specifications and the same screen, which is 2.1 inches diagonally. Now, despite being a commercial failure selling less than 2 million units, I think it's still a very interesting phone that in many ways was ahead of its time. For one, Nokia definitely got right the prediction that mobile gaming would be very popular uh, versus back in the day where we had separate devices for all the things we wanted to do, like a PDA just for organizing notes, you know, a gaming console just for gaming, and a regular phone. Still, it was just a little bit too early and it came with too much compromises for many to swallow uh, in the Engage's time, which was a little unfortunate. Now, like other Nokia phones from that era, it ran on Symbian OS, so in a sense it can be classified as a smartphone. Um, of course, it's not extremely powerful by today's standards. It has just a 100 megahertz single core processor, but it was sufficient to play back games. Another phone that comes to mind when looking at it would be the later Sony PlayStation phone or the Xperia PlayStation phone uh, that was an exclusive on Verizon that ran on Android, was more powerful, but was also not really commercially successful for Sony, uh, but also tried to bridge the gap between a portable console by having better controls and ergonomics for handheld gaming with a smartphone concept. Anyways, taking a closer look at the design here does still look kind of cool in a very nostalgic way. The bumpers came in a number of different colors that you could customize. This is a lime green version, also comes in orange and black, and you can still find this in kind of refurbished condition for around $40 or so, but when it was new it sold for around $300 with a contract. The transfective screen is actually always on, so you'll be able to see the time and date information. It actually tries to move around a little bit periodically to prevent burn-in, and whenever you tap on any of the keys, the screen kind of wakes up and the backlight also turns on. We have a typical 4-way D-pad, a OK key, talk and end keys down below here. There's also a kind of a multitasking key over here, soft keys for selecting on-screen prompts, and then over here we have a clear key, and this is uh, a T9 layout for really dialing and making phone calls. Uh, it's a little bit awkward because, uh, as you can imagine, kind of texting um, becomes a little bit strange with all the keys popped onto the side. In addition, there's two accented orange keys, the 7 and the 5, and they act as the A and B buttons for selecting things, jumping around, things like that when you're actually gaming, and they are slightly raised above and have a different texture from the other keys. Now on the very top, there's access to a headphone jack in addition to a charging port, both of which are proprietary. Headphone jack uses 2.5 millimeters as opposed to the more popular 3.5 millimeters, and it uses Nokia's proprietary charging slot. The bumper does make the phone feel pretty grippy and, for the most part, relatively rugged. Nokia devices have always held up quite well in terms of hardware. On the rim, there's also a power key, and then on the base, there is one of the speakers in addition to the slot where you can pop in that memory card. Now, on the original Engage, the memory card slot was not accessible unless you remove the battery, but on this one, it's actually hot swappable. All you need to do is tap on the menu and select on eject card, and then you can pop out and swap into new games and cartridges. And then behind the cover here is where you'll find the battery. It takes a swappable BL5C battery and also the full-size SIM card slot. Since its discontinuation, the Engage has kind of developed a small fan gathering and there's been hobbyists trying to hack it a little bit and create different projects for it and you can find lots of uh, memory cards for now on sale for really cheap uh, they can hold up to one or two gigabytes and oftentimes you'll be able to download lots of the games which were released onto the memory card and then pop it in and play it back so it becomes almost like a retro emulator this is a very compact phone or gaming console next to the aforementioned retro game 350 that was the last device we did a review on you can see it's a lot smaller rendering it very easy to tuck into a pocket there are no shoulder keys um, however in addition one thing that's lacking from a hardware perspective is a camera so there's no rear camera 
either. So no snaps on this particular phone. Returning now to the phone's user interface, let's actually dim the lights a little bit to see kind of the backlights a little bit more clearly. And the backlights on the D-pad here is also orange, which does look pretty cool. Now, some of the language settings on here are actually set by default on the version I have to Chinese. Um, there's various models that were released for different markets, ones in Asia, uh, in China and Japan, also ones in Europe. And um, a difficulty of the Symbian V60 operating system at the time uh, was the ability for it to change the system language. So it's a little bit tough to change this back to English. However, for the most part, things are still recognizable or guessable as we kind of interact with it. There's a time information, battery status remaining, a wallpaper. They're all pretty typical if you've handled a Nokia phone from the early 2000s. So if we jump into the main menu and take a closer look, um, it's going to take a second for it to initiate, but we have some of the games and titles here. Engage Arena is the aforementioned multiplayer mode. So if you have someone nearby or someone who's connected to the internet using um, the 2G connection, you're able to have that multiplayer functionality. We can tap on the check mark to enter into it, and because it is a smartphone operating system, we are able to do things like create new appointments and alerts. It's a little hard to guess though since everything is in Chinese, but that is definitely possible. Other simple tasks include accessing your email, uh, which you can of course add onto this device. The folder here contains your productivity tools and apps, including things like a calculator. Um, so you can do things like computation using the D-pad to navigate around. Pretty simple and straightforward. There's also things like um, additional notes. You can also create different voice memos, uh, which are also pretty simple. You can begin recording and uh, you know add any notes as they go along, create checklists and for reminders for yourself. Uh, the icon pack, as you can see here, is definitely not the easiest to make out. It is still orange, kind of matching the orange backlight, but uh, it's a little bit muted. And then the second folder here is ba basically settings, where you can change things like the controls for gaming. You can change the volume, you can change things like uh, Bluetooth, you can turn that on or off. You can also do things like take a look at your directory for your sim, things like that, pretty basic. Everything else is gaming related and we can scroll through and see uh, quite a few games and titles. So going through some of the sample games uh, that we have on here, I'm actually not too familiar with all of them. A few of them did come preloaded to me. So this is going to be kind of an exploration process for me as well, kind of a reaction in some sense, but it should be at least a demo of what the graphics performance are like on the Engage, which again is actually not bad, um, you know, considering its age. We can tap on the 7 key again, just basically to fast forward. This is a prologue. Still not too sure what this game is. If you guys know, be sure to let me know. Uh, but anyways, the slowest part is probably the loading after the game does load. Again, the graphics are all right. The slightly awkward part is that the screen here is portrait as opposed to kind of widescreen or horizontal, like the majority of other handheld games gaming consoles. That's probably just to make things more compact and because they probably recycled the screen from other popular Nokia phones from back in the day. But we do have a bit more of letterboxing as a result, as you can see there. Um, screen quality is decent. It does get plenty bright. Uh, the only downside is it isn't a IPS display, since that didn't really exist back then, so viewing angles are not the best. Um, if you kind of tilt it, you can see how the colors can wash out at uh, various angles, but if you're looking at it head-on, it's actually decent. And I think now it's telling me to choose a character, so I can go left and right, it tells me the profile. I can choose Linda, she's 24 years old I'm guessing, and then you can pick her as, uh, you know, the person that you want to play as, or you can go over to Troy, he's 29 probably when he passed. So it looks like these are all people that were perhaps killed by some type of demon um, and you can choose them to be resurrected and play as a hero for your journey. So oh, he's standing up now and it seems like he's able to hold the sword as his weapon um, and presumably you're able to also see if you have anything like weapons stored in your bag. Uh, so once actually the prologue stops, you're actually able to see a full screen. So they do have the games take advantage of the entire display panel here, which is good. It does fill up more canvas now that makes it look more comfortable. Um, so you're able to kind of fight your way through. If there's any kind of demons available, you can probably kind of try and attack them and uh, get through different missions. So that seems to be the mission of the game. Uh, so kind of a fun little title, not anything too dramatic, but uh, animations and whatnot do feel pretty decent. Actually, not bad. It's a fun little game that you can find. Again, movements do seem pretty decent. 
So we don't have time actually to go through all of these games on here since there are so many, uh, but just to sample a few of these, multiplayer or single player, we can choose the difficulty level, tap on the OK to start, and um, indeed we're just playing against a computer, but we have to objectively get to kind of the, uh, the crystal here and uh, grow our snake longer and longer, and that's kind of the whole point. So just a slightly more animated version of snake. Otherwise here, the VNES is a application which you can install and find uh, for Symbian OS, a kind of virtual NES emulator. Um, indeed, we have NES-based games ported over to be playable on Nokia phones. And in this case, of course, it's pretty ergonomic with the controls. Battle City, uh, Crystal City, Dr. Mario, um, so on and so forth. So INES um, and you know all types of different games. Let's try maybe Mario Different Worlds. Um, it actually seems to be ported over pretty well. So we are able to kind of move along, but I actually haven't been able to figure out how to jump yet. Huh? I think the keys maybe need to be remapped on here, but this is indeed the full version of Mario, as you can see for NES. Um, V-Sun is probably also for other types of um, games uh, for you know different consoles at the time, Sun-based consoles, uh, .smc formats. Other ones are kind of classic Battle Galactica inspired ones. Some of them are kind of web browsers as well. So of course you can browse the web if you have a data connection on here. Uh, Skyforce, Seven Days, that sounds interesting. Let's see what that opens to. It might be a real engaged game, then it's going to show up with a engaged splash screen upon boot. Now speaking of in terms of the uh, performance, it is just reading it from that memory card, and also in terms of battery life, it does seem to be decent. Uh, you'll be able to, if you're using it as just a phone in standby mode, it will last you for quite a while, a week or two, just like other classic Nokia phones from the era. The battery life was very long. If you're using it continuously for gaming and kind of taxing the processor, uh, it will last you still I would say around five to six hours even now before you need to swap out a different battery or something. Uh, it seems like this game though is not authentic to engage. It was designed for just other regular consoles and it has to rotate the screen which is not really taking advantage of the um, console's orientation. Presumably you're trying to get through kind of a locked room or some type of maze I think and uh, solve almost like a mystery in this uh, narrative that probably spans around seven days. Uh, so this is an example of something that you can port over. There's plenty of third-party developers and lots of uh, community members. Again, it's kind of developed a small cult following over the years that you can still find uh, content for. Uh, and again, animations are a little bit stronger than on the Nintendo Game Boy Advance from back in 2001. Um, that was a bit more kind of childish in terms of its animations. This is closer to something like a Sony PlayStation 1. And indeed, it's kind of a locked room that we have to just try to solve. Fireball, which is a pretty simple kind of a game here where we have a pinball that we have to try and change the platform here and get it to bounce around. Um, this is also not an authentic engaged title, but should be stuff that you can find available through the community kind of forums and things that you can download online for it. Again, just like other retro emulators here in this day and age where you can find different ROMs and whatnot. And here we have an additional arcade, um, it seems like collection. So probably in here we have some mini games. Again, these are all from third party developers, but this is actually kind of cool in terms of how the floating animations move around, but you'll be able to see different things like um, Galaxy Invaders, so these are all kind of uh, small mini games, but in a collection suite. Larger game that I see here, Asphalt 2, uh, that is pretty classic. Now we have, of course, still Asphalt games on our um, smartphones for Android and iOS, but uh, this is kind of when the franchise was still very new, a very classic racing game. And it seems like this one is authentic to Nokia as well, as we are getting that Engage splash screen uh, from Gameloft. It does take a while though for it to load, a bit of a splash screen here, but it seems like tapping on the 5 key will allow us to go, and then of course the arrow keys allows us to turn in different directions. Uh, there is no kind of motion sensor or accelerometer, so everything is just using the physical buttons. Uh, there's definitely a little bit of um, frame rates dropping here and there, as you can see. And um, again, the graphics are by no means going to be the most crisp, but still is, for the most part, playable. Here's one for Atari that looks interesting. Let's see what that entails. Loading from the memory card. So this is another authentic engage title. 
So this is pretty similar to that other arcade game that I just showed you guys previously. It's kind of a collection or suite. Uh, these were also pretty common for kind of Game Boys back in the day, where there were small cartridges that contained lots of mini games. They weren't, you know, as demanding or serious as a first-person shooter or a kind of mystery game, but uh, it was classics bundled into one. There's Asteroids, Centipede, Crystal Castles, Liberator, Pong, Space Duel. So these are all very classic from Atari. There's FIFA 2006, so these are probably other games that I believe are more authentic for the Engage platform at the time. Call of Duty, which is probably another more authentic Engage game uh, that came out on a cartridge originally, but now is you know available for you to pop into um, a memory card, basically like an emulator. I have to say though, the speakers are also pretty loud in terms of their quality for a mono unit. Not the smoothest thing in the world. Uh, but overall it is functional, we can kind of move around, and uh, we hear kind of um, gunshots in the distance. We can switch between, it seems like, different views just by tapping on the 7 key here, and we can probably move forward here just by tapping on the front forward key. It kind of reminds me of Minecraft in the way in terms of how the animations are these days, but uh, not bad in terms of still getting a little bit of fun out of it. Other things like Bomberman, it's a pretty classic game where we just leave bombs to try and clear out different blockades and enemies and then go through the entire kind of maze-like situation. Very classic titles. Spider-Man 2, so that seems to also be, I'm guessing, a specialty game for the platform back in the day. So essentially we are talking about really old consoles like NES consoles, for example, will be uh, playable as far as retro emulators are concerned, but this is definitely not a kind of emulator to get if you're planning on, you know, popping in ROMs or things like Nintendo, you know, DS, for instance. So anything that comes after this in terms of history, we're obviously not going to get the best effect from. So this one is a pretty good example of uh, slightly better animations, I'd say, in terms of being able to kind of um, move around the city just using the wires and flying around. Uh, the pixels, you know, of course, we're getting quite a bit of pixelation here, but Still, it's actually doing surprisingly decent in terms of being able to give us a pretty immersive and enjoyable gaming experience for something that is from such a throwback age. So that's more or less it for our retro throwback look at the Nokia Engage QD. Even though commercially it wasn't very successful, and for some it was dubbed as one of the worst phones in history just because as a phone, the practicality of certain things like being able to make texts uh, really easily or making calls in an elegant way were in some way lost, the concept of having a phone that's powerful enough to also be acting as a gaming console is very futuristic and actually it's a very fun little gadget to take a look back on um, and reminisce. I think that if you find it at the right price it's actually still worth a closer look. Could be uh, something to pick up just to get a few hours of fun in when you can and uh, definitely not bad in terms of its age and the type of games that it can handle. Uh, there's lots of again community support for it. You can find lots of third-party ROMs in addition to ROMs for the Engage platform just loaded onto a memory card uh, just a gig can give you a lots of enjoyment out of it as you can see here. So it's not going to be again a replacement for any smartphone, it doesn't have a camera, uh, but for what it is it's still a kind of a neat uh, period in history where phones were still very experimental in terms of what they could be and Nokia was at the forefront of trying to push innovative form factors. You can check out more details if you're interested in links down below but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been a look back at the Nokia Engage QD, the second generation model also dubbed as the Taco phone.